The Core. I found this movie again, browsing around on Netflix some days ago, and I remembered enjoying it when I first saw it. I do think I saw it when it was first released, so I, I was surprised this ended up doing so badly. It couldn't even make back its budget. It's got a 41% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Not that I've ever really paid attention to Rotten Tomatoes, but it seems to be the most frequently referenced uh, rating site system. So I guess it has to be somewhat reflective of the general opinion. The core is a very generic science fiction planet-wide disaster movie. Something threatens the planet on a global scale, something that in real life humans would be absolutely powerless to do diddly squat about, but a motley team of scientists, engineers, and rogue specialists, I guess, is put together with a plan to reverse the disaster. In, in this case, the liquid metal outer core of the Earth stops spinning. Now, the description, the explanation of the Earth and its layers, and the importance of this, the, the, the layering, and the differences between the layers, the importance of those in the planet's electromagnetic field is decently explained by the protagonist about 24 minutes in. The mechanics of what actually would happen if the Earth's outer core stopped cycling, on the other hand, is most likely all fantasy. I, I have a background in geology from my major in environmental science, but I can't give you the particularly cal calculations of, of that scenario if the Earth stops spinning. It's just, just on too massive a scale for me to do the actual calculations. But it is true that the molten metals in the outer core of the Earth generate Earth's electromagnetic field. This much is true. The core being what is known as a geodynamo. In this sense, a dynamo being a celestial body that generates an EM field, an electromagnetic field, in this way over astronomical timescales, over the timescale of a star or a planet. Jupiter has a massive electromagnetic field, uh, also called its magnetosphere. It is the largest and strongest field in the solar system, only, well, surpassed only by the sun's heliosphere. And Jupiter's magnetosphere is so huge that it ex actually extends to the orbit of Saturn. Anyway, so the outer core of the Earth stops spinning. The Earth's EM field breaks down. Th they got that right. If, if the outer core, if the molten metals in the outer core stop spinning, which is ridiculous, but if they were to, the Earth's EM field would, would break down. That, that is true. This, and, and this has something to do with why weaknesses in the EM field well, let me explain. The Earth's electromagnetic field is what the solar wind from the sun uh, bounces off of. The Earth's EM field deflects the solar wind and uh, radiation from the sun and from out outer space, deflects it away from the planet, protects the Earth's biosphere from that cosmic b bombardment. Um, that is why weaknesses in the EM field uh, are of such great concern and a uh, potential breakdown during uh, magnetic reversals, although I don't really understand uh, how, how the magnetic reversals work. Um, we do not see mass extinctions every time there's a magnetic reversal, so I, I don't, it's not going to be a global killer, um, but it is concerning. Okay, so after all of that, after all of that is explained, if you're able to suspend disbelief a little, this is not at all a bad movie. 
the adventure is handled well, uh, and all of the characters are likable, in my opinion. It, this movie actually succeeds in the same way that Armageddon did with its characters. You do get to know each one of them quite distinctively within a short time past their introduction, which is pretty good writing. Um, maybe the characters don't stick quite as well with you, or maybe there wasn't as much heart in them. Although, I don't know, I, I think I can describe this this main team, this cast of characters, uh, almost more completely than I can the Armageddon cast. I'm, I'm really not sure why this did as was received as badly as it was. Um, I know critics mostly gave it mixed reviews, and uh, and it was a bomb. But but I'm. It doesn't seem to really be a fault of the story, so I'm a little bit confused. Um, in, the, in the Rotten Tomato site, it says, and I quote, uh, The core is described as a B-movie with its tone planted firmly in its cheek. The core is so unintentionally or intentionally bad that it's a hoot. And, and, and then it has several reviews citing numerous scientific inaccuracies in the film. You know what? Anytime you get a global disaster film, there's going to be a lot of scientific inaccuracies. That's just going to that's just going to happen. Uh, don't even get me started on what 2012 did. Uh, that movie was just ridiculous in its portrayal of. Um, as are the asteroid movies. Um, some slightly more grounded than others, but that's only slightly. And considering all that, this is not bad in comparison. There's a YouTuber who explores these weird scientific questions and scenarios called Vsauce. Uh, he also addresses other random interesting topics like uh, money and, and video games and, and uh, various things. One of his videos is, is titled what if the Earth stops spinning? And now here he addresses what would happen if the planet itself stopped rotating, not if just um, the inner core al alone stopped churning. So it's not the same scenario, uh, but it is an entertaining video to watch. Um, and talk about mass chaos. The core, I, I think, is on the high end of B-movies. It's not terrible at all. I don't even think it's that bad, and I don't think it's because I'm just someone who views this as a guilty pleasure, because I genuinely think it doesn't have all that many problems, again, given the subject material of um, global cataclysm and absurdity of, of what and how is being attempted by the characters. Now, there's a collaboration between scientists in recent years uh, and the entertainment industry called the Science and Entertainment Exchange that is trying to get science more accurately represented in science and technology movies. And according to Wikipedia, uh, in a poll of hundreds of scientists about bad science fiction films, the core was voted as the worst. I'm going to say this again. I don't think this is the worst. The characters are good. I can't say wonderful, but good and likable. I, I like the main character. I like the main girl. I, I like the crew. I like the... Um, Scientist who's really high on himself. He seems, uh, the movie kind of sets him up as like he's a stiff and a know-it-all, and, and, and he is, and that he's actually not as talented as he portrays, but in the end he, he does come out with a kind of surprise, so. Uh, I like the, I like the guy who builds the ship. I like, um, I like the, the techno geek, they, uh, they, they get to hack the internet. You'll see if you see the movie. Um, but the crew members are very distinct and even funny, and the adventure is, is, is suspenseful. 
uh, the military guys are the typical military guys that, you know, have a contingency in case they think everything is going wrong and want to override them. So, yeah, you, you've seen that before. But, but the crew is cool. When, whenever it seems they're getting into trouble, they seem to get through it okay, and then the next thing you know, it gets worse, and they lose someone at the moments, at the moments when these things should happen. And each time it's given its fair gravity towards the situation. This is not, this is not bad writing. This is good. This is, this is not the greatest science fiction movie by any means, but it's, I like it. It also helps that this movie is relatively shorter than others. It's just about two hours long exactly. I doubt it could have been much shorter, and I'm not really sure how I go about improving it. Um, I'm not really sure what could have been done to make this great. Um, maybe it's something weird about audience reception. I, I don't know. It's, um, it's good. It's not It's not totally awesome, but it, it's good. It's uh, the absurdity of actually reaching down into the core of the Earth, of actually traveling there, uh, is addressed and explained in this movie. It's just that one of the scientists out in the desert happens to have created the technology that can do it, the technology that in real life doesn't exist. Um, so once you can buy that, this is actually pretty easy and fun to sit through, in my opinion.